Hello, hello, and uh, welcome back, guys. So in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of an exercise. We're going to take a look at some of the top uh, dividend aristocrat stocks and decide whether it's a good idea to potentially own them. Now, dividend aristocrats, in case you are not aware of what they are, they're actually companies that have been increasing their dividends for the past 25 years consecutively without ever having dropped it or stopped it uh, for a, even a little while. And uh, it's interesting to ask this question because, uh, as you'll see, we're sitting at a U.S. Uh, five-year treasury of 3.5% almost, which means that you can basically make 3.5% uh, almost risk-free, practically speaking. And so you may be wondering, if you can make this almost risk-free, does it actually make sense to be adding dividend stocks to a portfolio? Typically, they pay around 3%, uh, typically. But um, they are riskier because they are businesses. Does it make sense then to be adding this to a portfolio? There are two schools of thought sort of here. The, the thing is, and you have to remember, the fact that a lot of stocks have been buttered down. So you can potentially get them at a cheaper price. And so you can potentially target buying a company that will yield some dividend. And through the years, it's going to be doing even better as uh, you know, they have lost quite some value recently due to what has been happening to the economy. Now, of course, it definitely depends on the company themselves, uh, generally speaking. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's important to realize that, uh, you know, some of the companies, some of these kinds of companies that are great, pretty much, a lot of these companies are great, have actually suffered some loss, um, at least paper loss, in their market value that, um, you know, in the future could uh, come back and could, uh, you know, could be much, much better for a company and yield some better results for investors. So what kind of companies are we talking about? Now, I have a few articles here that talk about the nine dividend aristocrat stocks to buy now, for example. It's interesting to notice that people are talking about Dover Corp, Coca-Cola, for instance, Federal Realty Investment Trust, Trust uh, Abbott uh, Laboratories, PepsiCo, another well-known one, Walmart, VF and the likes, VFC. Now, another article here, 3M, Leggett & Pratt. WBA, Walgreens, IBM, Realty Income, uh, very well-known companies here that uh, many people are holding and they are very well known for their dividends. And this article also, also discusses whether the, it, the dividend is safe, I guess, based on their payout ratios. We're going to talk about this one. And uh, this article as well, kind of talking again about uh, dividend aristocrats here, talking about companies and which ones could make sense. Uh, VF is one, WBA, 3M, for example. Uh, IBM, Realty Income, Legged and Pratt. So we're going, what we're going to do in this case is uh, we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at um, five companies, five top dividend aristocrats, starting with 3M and see whether it actually makes sense to be uh, adding this company to a portfolio or at least a, a minor portfolio, a small portfolio of, let's just say, five dividend aristocrats, uh, which one makes sense, if they do make sense actually to be adding to a portfolio. Now, I'm not picking the top here, I'm just examining whether the top uh, five or at least some of the top five uh, dividend yielding aristocrats are actually good companies in, uh, as an overall hold. So don't think that this is a video about the best ones uh, best ones to hold. Is about, is, it is basically, basically about, um, is, does it make sense to hold the, um, some of the top five uh, dividend aristocrats? That's what I'm examining here. And it kind of will give you a sense to, on how to use this uh, tool, the tool that we're having over here to evaluate whether it makes sense. And of course, obviously, all our um, patrons have access to our tool, myinvestorsheaven.com. And you can find links in the description box below this video if you're interested in becoming one. Now, 3M is a company that has been having a lawsuit, and we know about this one. And this is why it has been dropping, and dropping significantly. And this is what I like out of these companies. Like, you can kind of see the five years chart. It used to be like 20, 200, 220 at some point. And um, so, currently sitting at 100 bucks, this becomes very, very interesting in my, in my eyes. And uh, it, it's actually 34% from its one-year high, but it has been much, much higher like two years ago. So this is important to examine here because, again, we may be sitting at a, at a near at a time where stocks are going down. But if you do the proper investment and you buy them now, if they are the proper investment, you may actually yield the rewards in the, in the next five years or so, or maybe 10 years, and still keep getting paid. So... For this kind of company, you will see here, and we're not going to dive, dive too deep into the financials of each company because it would take uh, like an hour at least. But we will see some important metrics. Like, for instance, the period the price to free cash flow are pretty low here. And that's what I like to see. Now, this is a company, it's a conglomerate, and it's an industrial uh, pretty much sector company that you would expect uh, a low uh, P ratio, generally speaking, and a low price to free cash flow. They are buying back some shares, which is nice to see as well. 
And um, what is important is examining the uh, free cash flow payout ratio here and the payout ratio of the company. That's the net income one. That's the free cash flow one. So getting a little bit stretched out here. Now, I do want to use our stock evaluation tool, but I'm going to use our dividend discount, uh, pretty much Gordon uh, discounted model, because um, this company is actually paying a lot of its uh, income back to shareholders, as you'll see here. And so what I'm going to do, because this is a dividend discount uh, comp a dividend company, I want to use our dis dividend discount model to evaluate this one. And so what I'm going to see is uh, how the company has been increasing their dividends through the years. So you can kind of see year one, that's five years ago, 5.52, 5.79, 5.89. And you can see the, you know, the increase through the years getting a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit lower, right? So you see there is a little bit of a recession here going on uh, with the dividends of the company, but they're still increasing it because they want to remain an aristocrat. And that's, uh, that's one of the nice things about the reliability of uh, the overall reliability of these kinds of companies, which is awesome to see. Now, the dividend growth that we're going to be adding here for our projections is going to be near these levels and lower because we want to be safe. So we're going to go 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0. Let's say 7. That's the dividend growth that we anticipate for the upcoming five years for this company. And we want to achieve an annual return of, let's just say, 8% here. Now, the company would increase overall more than likely through its uh, value, through its stock value. But let's just say that we anticipate that the company will be sitting at around $100 uh, for the upcoming five years. Let's just um, picture that. And so what we're going to do is ask for the company to make us some annual return based on the dividend. So I'm uh, an about 8% uh, return here with the, this kind of dividend growth every year. So this kind, this kind, and this kind. So we'll hit, we'll hit calculate. And what are we getting here? You will see... Now, the current price is sitting on 101. Now, this seems red, but remember, remember, the company is also increasing in terms of its uh, value, right? It's not like we're buying a, a bank here that's just going to be paying us money and that's it. It's not a bond. It's increasing its value as, as well. So sitting, sitting kind of close, pretty close, actually, fairly close to the current price is actually really encouraging here. And if we take it to the dis dividend discount model, the, sorry, the DCF model, that's uh, the discounted cash flows model, you will see there that um, it makes it even more sense to potentially own uh, this uh, company for its overall performance. And its annual dividend yield is actually pretty nice, pretty solid here, at, uh, almost, uh, as you'll see here, about 6%. And um, we can take a little bit of a look as well at the dividend stub, or not the social trends, the dividend stub. And you can kind of see what the company has been uh, doing in terms of the dividend, how, 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 how they have been increasing it through the years as well, pretty much increasing it uh, every uh, period of time, every year, because they have to, they have to remain an aristocrat. So that's uh, that first one, uh, 3M, looks interesting to, uh, for a potential portfolio that's uh, going to be including all these companies. And because it's down a lot, their, their um, effective uh, payout, their effective dividend yield is actually pretty high and uh, has been increasing, as you can understand. It makes a ton of sense because the company has halved in value, uh, halved in value. And so that means that the stock, um, the, you know, you can buy more stock with your money right now because it's actually halved um, in terms of its value. And so you are getting about uh, like 100% more in terms of the um, the dividend, the, the dividend that people were actually getting when the company was at uh, more than 200 bucks, for example, and they bought it back then. So next up, let's take a look at the next company and see whether this could also be added to an overall portfolio, portfolio that makes sense. Before we do that, I want you to really realize what it means uh, for the stock price to go down in relation to the dividends. And I have made a video about it in uh, like maybe a couple of years ago, so it's been a while. But you always need to realize that dividends are paid based on the stock unit, not the stock price. And so the more stock units that you hold, the higher of a dividend yield that you get if you hold them at a lower price. And so effectively, our, the tool can actually show you this in a very nice manner. With a, If you click at the dividend yield, and you will see that back in 2018, the company was paying 2.5%, or back in 2019, it was paying 3.5%. And the reason for this is, again, if you take it back to five years, you will see that the stock price was sitting at about 200 bucks, which means that the dividend was like half of what it is today. So this is another nice thing about company stock prices that are paying dividend if it goes down. The fact that they are effective uh, dividend yield, the, the yield that they pay because the stock price is down, if you buy today, is going to be significantly higher. So this is a very, very important, a very, very important concept. And one of the reasons why I do, uh, in some situations, like dividend stocks that have been battered down. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. 
Now I'm going to go a little bit faster because we're already sitting at near 10 minutes in the video. So Legged in Pratt is the next one and another very interesting one which has also been battered down like 30% since its one year high and you will see where it used to be and where it is right now going lower and it becomes a, a very interesting opportunity potentially, a very interesting possibility here sitting at the 13th and the 12th uh, in terms of their ratios over here. And um, again, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a look at our dividend discount model. First, I want to see what kind of payout they're having. As you'll see, again, it's most of their free cash flow that they're, that they're paying back. And uh, again, kind of stretched as well. But they have been increasing the dividend at an about 5% rate uh, pretty much every year. I will go lower because we know, you know, we have to be, let's go 2.5%. We have to be a little bit, uh, you know, um, a little bit conservative. And uh, I'm going to ask for uh, 8% um, for the annual return. Again, remember that the stock price will likely increase itself in the upcoming few years uh, since it has been suppressed. Uh, yet again, in this current environment, it could go down even more. And if it goes down even more, then the annual dividend yield will increase and it would make even more sense to accumulate stock, that is. And you will see that uh, right now with these kinds of uh, valuations here, this kind of dividend growth, it even now makes kind of a lot of sense to potentially be adding this to portfolio for a 5.7% uh, effective dividend yield right now. All right. Next up, uh, Walgreens, another interesting company that you would never think that it would ever pay a, a dividend yield of 5.3%, like it used to be significantly lower a few years ago. Again, it has been suppressed significantly, and this is why it's down. Five years chart, you can kind of see it used to be almost near 90 over here, and then it's going down and down and down. And again, this becomes an interesting opportunity. Now, the company has been, uh, it looks like it has been losing money lately. And their payout ratio has been, um, you know, hit because of that. But if we take a look again at the dis dividend discount model here, you will see that um, it is reflected, uh, you know, the business you know, acumen sort of like is reflected right now. In the, I mean, the upcoming sort of like couple of years with the fact that the dividend growth rate has been uh, stalling. But uh, for this reason, we're going to anticipate that this will continue happening for a while. So we're going to go 0.5, 0 0.8 0 and uh, 1% over here. And um, for our annual return, we're going to ask again for about 8%. Remembering that we'll li we will likely get some uh, extra from the dividend stock eventually as well. And you will see here that, uh, again, sitting a little bit um, lower than what we'd like it to be, but not that far. So, again, it is a company that's paying 5.3%. So we have an average of, of about 5.3% with what we have selected so far, if not even more. And this is interesting, very interesting, because um, it's still higher than the um, uh, interest rates right now that we can be paid for a um, uh, so re relatively short to medium term uh, bond uh, portfolio. So it does make it does potentially make some sense, plus the extra that we could potentially get, get out of the stock price if the stock actually increases itself through the year. So very, very interesting. Let's take a look at the next one. So I'm going to take a little bit of a look at IBM. And uh, this is a tech company. So it, uh, in some situations, it doesn't make a ton of sense for a tech company to be paying a uh, dividend uh, yield pretty much. But if they have been stalling in terms of growth and they actually want to uh, attract some investors, they even these kinds of companies could end up paying some extra in terms of dividends. And you will see here in the five years that this one hasn't been dropping that much is the thing, is what I don't like. It has been dropping, but not that much. So it's 130 while it has been almost 160. So it's not a precipitous decline. And uh, that's uh, probably something that I don't really like, especially since uh, their payout ratio is also a little bit stretched and they are paying out about and about 5%. Now, again, I'm going to take a little bit of a look at our stock evaluation tool and our dis dividend discount model in this case. And uh, you will see that they have been having some interesting dividend growth rate, about 3%. So I'm going to go 2%, uh, 2.3, let's say, and 2.7 over here. And on your return, again, I'm going to ask for 8%. Let's see what we get out of, the, out of IBM here. And you will see that we're not that far, even for IBM. Now, again, remember that this is a tech company, so there are some caveats here to, uh, you know, to know and to realize, you know, they could have uh, some years that could could not be, may not be great, some years that they may be increasing their net income top and bottom line. It's a tech company, yet it is a sort of like a, uh, I should say an old company that's kind of not really growing that much, sort of like a dinosaur. But still, it is an, a tech company. It's not like the sort of like the boring pharmaceutical like Walgreens is, for instance. But again, out of the boring, you can get some uh, good money. So I do like boring in many situations. And let's examine our final one here. So the last one that we're going to examine is going to be Realty Income, a real estate sector company, a REIT. Then these, uh, these companies do have to add, distribute the, uh, the vast majority of their income back to shareholders as uh, profit, pretty much, 
in this situation, it is a REIT. And um, as you'll see, this has a high P ratio, relatively low price to free cash flow. And it's uh, pretty much issuing stock like uh, crazy. But you will see that their payout ratio, again, has to be uh, sort of like almost 100%. And um, it's, um, you know, it's sitting at, a, at a, an about range of that sort, if not more actually over here. And um, the dividend yield 4.8% is what we're having right now. Again, we're going to be taking a look at our dividend discount model. First of all, just quickly examine how the company has been doing in, term, in terms of its stock price. It has seen better days. Like imagine buying it here. This would be a very, very nice opportunity back in 2018. And uh, right now it's still dropping a little bit, but not uh, at an insane amount, uh, like 62, 75. It's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not great what it has been the one year high over here. It's about 80 has been the more than, a, more than one year before that. Okay, interesting. But the dividend discount model, what is going to tell us over here is the question. And you will see that they have been increasing the dividend at a different pace uh, through the years. Now they, it has been picking up uh, lately, but still I'm going to be a little bit careful and I'm going to go to 2.4 and let's just go three here. And annual return again, 8%. The average, uh, you, uh, the tool actually tells you about the average dividend growth rate, which you can use, of course, but I want to be a little bit more conservative. And I hit calculate. And you will see that we're, again, also relatively close. Again, remembering the fact that uh, you will likely get some extra out of the stock price through the years. Um, unless this one hasn't been uh, going that much slower recently. So maybe maybe it goes like 80 at some point in the upcoming few years. So yeah, interesting one to add to our portfolio as well, adding, adding a 5%. So the question here is, uh, does it make sense to potentially add these kinds of companies to a portfolio? And in my opinion, it does. Now, there are some things about um, dividends. The fact that they are getting al almost, or not almost, practically double taxed because they are taxed on the corporate level and they are also taxed on the individual level. So they are actually taxed twice and they are not the most efficient way to make money. The fact that the company is paying dividend also doesn't allow it to grow that much. So usually you don't expect great um, increases in terms of the stock price out of companies that are distributing dividends just because they don't grow that much. Uh, that's uh, pretty much what's happening there because they are distributing their money. They are almost acting like a, a wallet uh, for, for investors. But that's a good thing in some situations, especially when the stock market and the stocks overall are t t tend to go down. In a recessionary environment that we are sitting at right now, it may be an interesting one, an interesting addition to portfolio, almost like a hedge. You could think about it almost like a hedge, like a more safe play, a safer play. But uh, can these stocks go down even more? Yeah, definitely. They can go down even more, especially if we get into a recessionary period. But remember that they are aristocrats and they don't want to lose this uh, status. And so they really, the business has to go really, really down in order for them to actually cut down on their dividends. So this, has, this provides an extra little cushion here. Most of these companies will, uh, will, like, you know, you actually will actually move earth and water in order to pay their shareholders back. They really, really don't want to lose the 25-year track record, and so this is uh, something that uh, can potentially, you know, add some safety net to an investor here. So, would I potentially buy? Yes, I'm not a huge fan of dividends, generally speaking, because of the tax taxation thing and the fact that they don't allow the company to uh, grow that much if they distribute so much of their income back to shareholders. I'm more of an investor that aims on uh, aims on growth, pretty much. But still, in this kind of uh, in this kind of environment, an environment where the companies have been dropping like 50%, even the, these dividend companies, 40%, 30%, I'm getting a, a huge discount on the dividend that I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid more, and also I'm getting a discount on the stock price. So I, I could actually pocket money from the the stock actually doubling itself through the years. Now, yes, it may be it may take more than um, more time than Google, for instance. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be paid some income, and I'm gonna be having a safe a safe company overall and a safe portfolio. So it does make sense to add um, uh, dividend stocks to the portfolio. And like, I wouldn't overdo it pot potentially myself. Maybe it makes sense to allocate like 25% of a portfolio for let's just say seven or eight uh, dividend stocks uh, that are actually directed towards dividend investors like aristocrats or kings, for example. But overall, I do like the companies that have been dropping recently. They have great value for you know for our society for the for business, like Google is like um, uh, for instance Facebook, Meta, Alibaba. I have talked about all these companies and others as they are dropping, like for instance Alibaba, Adobe. Although they have been increasing their price uh, their price recently, making it a tougher buy. But uh, yeah, I do like these kinds of companies more generally speaking because they can, I think that they can do better through the years. But again, in sort of like a recessionary period where things are going down in value 
and bonds interest rates are actually increasing in value, this tends to drop the stock market. It may make a ton of sense to be adding a sort of like a safety net of that sort. Do tell me what you think about dividend stocks, aristocrats or kings. Which ones you prefer? Leave a comment below. I'm interested to hear your opinion. And I'll see you in the next one. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.